Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the trios of Perth and everybody else that's here today in BirdLife Australia. Uh, we are the Rangers from Mullen, Lake Gregory. Um, and like James said, we travel a long way. Um, but we've been working on the night parrot, doing a bit of work. So um, these are some of uh, That's where we are, but the waypoint there, we come from up there, there's a big lake there, Lake Gregory, you might have heard of Lake Gregory. Um, yeah, we're doing a bit of work there with the night parrot, so, and the other map is the other five areas that um, night parrot has been found. Um, so, these are the mob that support us, um, our PBC, Kimberley Land Council, uh, WWF, and Brian's Kimberley and Bird Observatory, and Department of Minister of Cabinet as well. Um, so when WWF came to us in East Kimberley, we were actually on a survey on bilbies, all the ranges, um, and we ended up with three cameras left over. So we put them out, and um, on the first night where we uh, were looking for bilbies, we got this image of a bird, if you can see it, but a bit blurry. But it flew through our cameras, and um, no one really believed us. So, <laughs> so we uh, had to go back with audio equipment, the song meters. So um, we wanted to play this little um, movie. Tiny a minute or so. We're here in the Great Sandy Desert uh, working with Environs Kimberley and the Barrigoo Rangers. The last few years we've been working on bilbies and more recently we decided to focus some attention on night parrots. So WWF and Environs Kimberley have come out and supported the rangers in these biodiversity surveys. We brought equipment like uh, sensor cameras and bioacoustic devices to listen for the night parrots. And extraordinarily, um, a couple of months ago, uh, we've got a photo of a night parrot flying across one of the sensor cameras. It's a small green parrot with a yellow belly and large head. It could only be a night parrot. We surveyed in areas that the traditional owners knew there were night parrots there um, for thousands of years. Only my grandfather told me about, about the night parrot. He seen it, but I didn't see it. And the night bird was, uh, he, had a, he had a song. You know, when it, like I you walk, you wobble. Yep. And they had that dandruff. We don't know. It, it was sacred. Yep. It's a night bird. We seem to have captured a photo of the night parrot flying by one of our cameras one of the first nights. So it was very exciting for everybody to finally see a picture of it because we haven't seen one in our lifetime. The significance of this species being recorded in this country cannot be underestimated. This is the third population that are known by Western scientists. There is one in Queensland and one in southern Western Australia. Um, so these, we have Dr. Alex Watson on the end, East Kimberley, Neil Hamaguchi, three rangers and our coordinator Aaron, they were there, are we still doing the work today? Um, so this is Abraham Kalyan. Cool. Yeah, um, for this project, we had to use those sound meters, uh, camera traps, um, had to figure out the normal habitat areas, non sites, identify populations.
And with that work, um, we also have to GPS all the locations so we can come back and do further field work. So this is the kind of country that we've been focusing on, so <coughs> big old Winnipeg, the salt plains and the rocky, um, rocky ground, um, yeah, the rocky areas, the big spin effects on them. And now we're focusing on the flood areas of our area. This is our lake, Mullen, where we live next to, and our boundary of uh, native title. So we're, that area is sort of up in this area where the Fair Creek River runs down. So we've got equipment out there now while we're away. Um, we send all our stuff to the Bird Observatory in Broome to a fellow named Nigel Jacket, and he um, analyzes it all and then sends our data back to us. Um, a bit of data. Um, so this one we thought was all they said was foraging. Um, so eight o'clock at night till nine, then they went quiet. The par parrot, when they came back at eleven. 12 and then 2 in the morning and Alex said that the other one was uh, roosting so the parrot came out at 6 at night 7, 8 up 12 o'clock um, we got some audio as well we take the children out um, teach them about the equipment and about the, um, how special the bird is to everybody in the world um, educate the children to go, yeah, set them all up. Talk to their elders, show them the bird. Um, some of them don't remember the bird, but um, they remember the whistle when they were young, when they were kids. Um, yeah. Their threats are uh, Camels, so I'm a corporate tutor with the land council, I shoot camels, all the rangers do. We've had a big cull in the last few years of horses. I think they shot over 10,000 horses with the egg department. Um, and we also work with a cattle station on our property as well that we are talking to um, about managing their livestock around the um, sensitive areas of the night parrot. And fire as well, we do early morning, uh, early morning, early season burning in the cool. And some, there's some late season fire that went through. These are our cameras that we put out for the parrot. Um, but on this day or that night, we got another threat there, a pest, the cat. And also, we didn't know there was foxes on our land, but we got a fox as well. So it's another. Um, impact for the bird. We educate the tourists when they come and visit us. We give them our brochures inside the map, tell them where they can and can't go. Um, we tell them about you know, what we're doing with our, with our work, with the night parrot stuff. So in the future, we have just got a grant, about um, 50 grand or something, about to do, because we can't get into all the remote areas, so we just damage cars. Um, we're going to be flying ranges in with equipment into real um, old spinifex, old areas, and dropping them off and GPSing all that there. Taking elders as well, so we can uh, make sure we're not going into any cultural areas. This is our working group in the Kimberleys. So we have our group the Gidja Rangers, and the other two Rangers, Nodora and also Barrett yeah. yeah. So that's our uh, working steering committee group in Broome, or uh, in the Kimberleys. And we've all got old spinifex and lakes and sand dunes and all that sort of stuff on our countries. And that's about it for us today. <laughs> I wanted to play that little me. sound there if it's all right. Yeah, I do for sure. Yeah. One of our recordings will share, I'll let it play if we can play. It's loud enough.
what time is that? Sunset? Yeah, one sunset. Yeah, one sunset. Uh, thank you. Cool.